the community is really tight knit. Um, we're a rural rural community, so everything is spread out really far. Um, lots of driving, um, some some lack of resources as far as uh, uh, public transportation and things like that. Um, a lot of folks here earn a living um, uh, doing manual jobs. We have a lot of uh, like we have wire mills and, and things like that around the area that employ a large part of the North Country. Um, so, you know, I've come to, to love the North Country for a lot of what it offers, not just the uh, outside activities, but just also the close knit and the, the, the more stronger community vibe, I would guess, I, I would say, you know, it presents. There's definitely some, some barriers as far as, you know, attending multiple healthcare visits. Um, it's, it's one thing if you see your doctor once a year, but for people with chronic conditions, trying to get to their doctor once every three months for follow-ups, um, you know, seeing um, concurrent providers that are maybe specialists and trying to, uh, you know, maybe from Littleton going down to a, a big hospital, say like Dartmouth-Hitchcock, which is, you know, about an hour and a half away. Um, that's, you know, that's not feasible for a lot of community members um, who, you know, trying to make ends meet. I think some of the food insecurity is geographic location. And just because you have access to a store that sells food, it may or may not be affordable. So if, if you're the only shop in town, you can set your prices differently and they may or may not be helpful to the people that you're selling your products to. In addition to that, as Chad mentioned, we have an economy here that is partly predicated on some small manufacturing. And within that, there is some better job security. At the same time, we have seasonal employment, sometimes related to the tourism industry. So I think that the underlying uh, financial insecurity is part of the food insecurity. A lot of people, um, working class families are really struggling um, to not only purchase healthy foods, but are struggling to, uh, you know, come to terms with how, if they had healthy food, how are they going to prepare it so everyone's going to eat it? Um, you know, you really, you know, you really can't go from, you know, receiving nutrition education to eating healthy. I think there's a, there's a step missing there. So um, what I've kind of grown in my position here to do is kind of take a step back and address that intermediate step and, you know, saying not only do we need to eat healthy, but we need to kind of talk about the tools that people can use to eat healthy, offer them the resources. Um, it's hard, again, I think, to, um, you know, to be in a position as a healthcare provider to say to someone you need to eat, um, you know, more vegetables when, you know, they might not have all of the resources to not only get those, but they have no idea once they get a head of broccoli in the kitchen, how to prepare it, um, you know, what, you know, what different ways you can cook it, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I think, you know, I've, I've grown to love that intermediate step of trying to um, talk about cooking and cooking and nutrition fundamentals. It's really clear for me that food and nutrition is a significant social determinant of health. And with Chad, we have the resources uh, beyond one-on-one -on -one to help one-on-many people. And if we can get people to see the value, things that they've never tried before. He managed to get uh, this book. Uh, what do we have? 5,000 of them, I think we got. Chad got through a grant. And it dispels the myth that eating healthy has to be expensive. And he's had people try things like parsnips that they probably couldn't identify, let alone try. So it's, he's, he's really gotten people to be a little more adventurous. And I think it's also important that we have a food pantry under our auspices. There's also access to commodity surplus food and, a, and some grocery stores. So we're not completely a food desert. Yet in a rural area, 26 towns, our uh, Warren facility is 22 miles to get to a grocery store. You know, so I, I think he's found ways to have people think about how do you take your commodity surplus food, your food pantry food, and what you can afford to buy. And these are the sorts of things that you can do. Uh, 
so it, it makes my life easy working with someone like Chad. You know, up here we have we have access to produce. We have a, uh, a community-owned food cooperative right across the street with lots of local produce and things like that. We have supermarkets, um, but I can tell you, in 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 the years I've been here, just about I think within the last two years, I've I've visited multiple of our elementary schools that uh, are in our service area, and I was taken back by some of the observations I made with with the kids there and uh, some of the comments they made. Um, I, I did um, a, a presentation type of event at one of our local elementary schools and brought a bunch of prepared produce, both fruits and vegetables, so we'd get a good mix. And basically my, my goal was to expose them to fruits and vegetables, but not only that, but provide some different dips that the kids could you know, kind of evaluate and say, oh, I like, you know, broccoli with this dip and I like apples with this dip and they can take home some recipes to their parents and, you know, work with that type of thing. Um, I was I was taken back by some of the comments when, you know, some of the girls and boys had said, oh, what is this? And they hold up a strawberry and, you know, they had never eaten a strawberry before or they had never, um, you know, when we looked at bell peppers, they had they'd only eaten green bell peppers. They didn't know red bell peppers existed. Uh, kiwi fruit, cauliflower, these things were, you know, uh, there was so much like, oh, what is this? You know, I was like, oh, um, it's an eye-opening experience because, you know, I, I live a life where, you know, it's basic knowledge of all these these nutrients and these vegetables and, and how good they are for us. But um, it's surprising how many folks just don't realize this the stuff is right there at our community's door and we can just take it home and eat it um i can tell you after you know relating back to my visits to the school um i do have you know multiple drawings and handwritten thank you notes with you know eat more vegetables written on it and and things of that nature and, and to me you know that kind of creates a picture that you know hopefully these kids are going home with a handout and their parents are asking them what they learned in school today. And they're saying, hey, Mr. Carrot, you know, Carrot Man or Mr. Carrot came to our school and gave us, you know, some dips. And um, I've heard anecdotally from uh, friends of mine who are parents of these students say, oh, you know, so, in, you know, my child talked about you at school today. Sounds like you made a big impact on the students. And, you know, above and beyond that, you know, it's, it's hard to see you know are these parents you know following up are they are they making these dips and cutting up the vegetables and, and putting those in the center of the table or in their child's lunch box um you know that's that's a piece i'd love to get more information on myself once a month i'd go to the co-op they have a a, a cafe with a, a teaching kitchen typing type of setup uh, a stove with a, a large area where we'd set up chairs and we'd advertise and community members more and more each month would come and attend. And I do three to four recipes that were mostly plant-based, you know, budget friendly and, and family friendly. And they get a chance to taste test these recipes, uh, give comments of, you know, whether they see themselves making them or not, what they would change, that kind of thing. And like I said, I think month by month, it, it really grew when we had the, the actual live audience because it was just something to experience the the smells of the the uh, the food actually cooking uh, to comment comment on you know the smell of garlic and then go into hey did you know that garlic is healthy you know for our bodies for a number of reasons and talking about you know its potential to help our immune system and thin our blood a little bit and provide you know a, a host of micronutrients and things like that so it was kind of a combination of you know cooking and you demonstrate some some cooking techniques um, such as how do you you know how do you cut open and de-seed or deep pit an avocado but we are working on actually currently a grant and we're always um, got our eyes open our eyes open out for uh, grants that are going to support our initiative to actually get a portable uh, demo kitchen and bring it throughout the community at different venues to do exactly what we've been doing at the food co-op you know, so I think that's what Chad does. It's it's if, if he's out cooking and people smell it, you can't not come up and pay attention. Uh, so I think that what he brings is getting the community involved in actively thinking about putting a menu plan together, going to shop with a grocery list that's based on the menu plan, 
that fits their budget and whatever health issues that they have. So I'd really like to see, uh, you know, our our efforts grow into, you know, literally getting out into the community. Um, because Ed can tell you shortly, um, you know, as patients, as community members, you know, we don't go see our healthcare providers, you know, that often, you know, uh, once a year, twice a year, maybe four times a year for the most part. So, you know, we really need to, to do a better job with addressing, um, you know, meeting people where they are. I think that's where people need to, you know, to be, in, that's where people need to be engaged and that's where you're gonna be most effective is trying to meet people where they're at in their routine schedules, you know, at, at churches, at, um, you know, health fairs, um, at, you know, um, publicized local events, things of that nature. Um, I think that's the way I, I kind of see things going. In my role at ACHS, you know, not only am I a, a community nutritionist and go out into the schools and the community, but I also um, receive um, flags through our electronic medical record system through our providers asking me to meet with patients one on one for various, you know, reasons. I would say a majority of it is for weight loss or for help with diabetes management through diet. From the very first time of meeting him, I was very comfortable. I felt I could talk to him about any of my concerns as far as I've never been one to worry about what I ate. I mean, I had the most probably worst bad habits that he'd seen in a long time. And um, to me, a meal was a bottle of soda and a bag of chips. That, that that was a meal to me. And I have gone from almost two years now to eating more fruits and vegetables, um, to drinking more water, to making sure I have the protein that I need to have, but worry more about the fruit and vegetable end of it to get the, you know, the herbs and whatnot into me. Um, and I have gone from when I started this whole trip of the um, gastric, I started out at 210 and I am down to 140 in a year and a half. There, there are people that don't have it as well as others. And, um, you know, I, I consider it a vocation for many of us to help out when we can. And for me to be able to make a living as well as make an impact in the community. I think that's, um, you know, that's, that's what matters most in my life. So I think it's, you know, kind of a personal, personal spiritual type of um, goal that I'm aiming for. And I, and, and when you have that type of goal, it's, you know, there's very little that can kind of shake you off course, I guess, because you're, you're not in it for the money. You're not in it for recognition. You're, you're in it for, you know, basically reducing healthcare costs, helping the economy, helping people come to those, um, uh, that epitome of, I mean, that epiphany where it's like, oh yeah, food does affect, you know, my mental health, my emotional health. When I eat better, I feel better. When I eat worse, I feel worse. And to be able to kind of, you know, push people into that, that side of the, uh, the, the side of the fence that involves eating healthier and, and to see what, you know, benefits our community can see and realize because of that. I think that's what I'm what I'm trying to, you know, wake up and do every day.